We have a wonderful evening of chamber music tonight, so you're in for a special treat. Um, we have Bart Feller, Julia Rosa, and Linda Mark playing for us for a short concert. Um, we'll have a very small break, and then we're going into a chamber music masterclass, which is going to be wonderful, um, and it does feature some of our own residents for this. So please help me give a warm welcome to our guests mm -hmm. tonight. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you so much. We're so happy to be here and play some favorite music for you with my wonderful colleagues, Julia on the oboe and Linda on the piano. The next piece we have for you is by the amazing Argentinian composer, Alberto Ginastera, although some people say it's Ginastera, so that debate will go on. Oh, I, I'm seeing some big no's in the audience. Um, so, um, uh, by the way, I was playing a wooden head joint designed to fit on my silver flute for the quants, and it's by the Boston maker David Chu, 
and with that one uh, equipment change, trying to sound a little closer to the flute that Quantz or Mozart or Bach would have recognized. But now I'm going to do an equipment change and bring on the silver for the rest of the program. <laughs> so the Ginastera is in three movements. Do you want to put them all up to me? Would that be okay? Sure. All the movements? The first is um, very, very canonic. So everything I play, she plays back to me. And then we, when he runs out of those ideas, we start to play the theme backwards and inverted. We do everything we can with, with this uh, opening movement theme. And when it's not jittery and running around, it's in these blocks of sound. You hear us hold entire bars just at certain intervals. And it's such a wonderful contrast when the music is fast, it's fast, and then it slows to just these one event per bar. Very, very cleverly done. The second movement is much more uh, languid and slow and dreamy. And I've been told that it's supposed to reflect the Argentinian grasslands, what's known as the Pampas. And the flute and the, and the oboe play actually not very much together in that movement, more sort of back and forth in a kind of a call and response style, as if maybe we're calling across the, uh, across the, uh, the, wild, the wild plains. And the third movement is back to the excellent. The hardest thing about this piece is clearly the pages. Uh, the third movement is back to the uh, jumpiness of the first movement, and it's a fugue. Uh, and uh, we play the subject in as many keys as uh, is known to man, and maybe a couple of excerpts. <laughs> Hope you enjoy it.
We have a little value add for you this evening before we go on to the drink with the piano. Um, uh, we're going to play uh, very short solo pieces for our instruments. I'll be playing the Debussy Syrinx, um, which everyone in this room knows very, very well. And Julia will play the Benjamin Britten Pan. So, of course, we're telling the same story. <laughs> so as you know, um, Pan was the half man, half beast, who was the, the party, party guy of his time. And he was chasing syrinx, and it didn't go that well. And she begged to be turned into the, uh, uh, for the gods to take her out of the situation. So she's turned into the, 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 the bamboos and the grasses that, that grow by the water. So he gets to the water's edge, and she's not there. But he sees these grasses, and he plucks them. And he uh, binds them together, blows into them, and makes the sound of the pan pipe, maybe the first flute. So the Debussy piece, as you know, is filled with melancholy and longing. Um, and then Julia will follow with uh, Benjamin Britten. Mm -hmm.
The final piece we have for you this evening is by the British composer Madeline Dring, and um, it's a charming piece. It feels like she channeled her inner Poulenc, um, <laughs> especially in the first movement. Uh, in the second movement, it's very um, beautiful and luxurious. Linda likes to say this is the movement she'd like to be um, played at both her wedding and her funeral. <laughs> <laughs> and the third movement, um, Dring finds her inner Shostakovich and she ends the piece with a little bit of bite, uh, not to mention a cadenza for just the flute and oboe alone together. Hope you enjoy it. Thank you. 
everybody. So I'm Melissa and I'm Bianca. And today we're playing Dockways and, <laughs> <laughs> and Rondo. <laughs> some things to sort of amp that up and, and sort of bring that even more to the forefront, okay? Um, let's go back to where the first flute joined the second flute. So can we start bar, um, bar, bar 12, all right? Um, so right off the bat, you're a little more involved with eye contact with her than she is with you. Is that a hard thing for you to be able to look up and, and get your notes? Only when I'm nervous. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> right. Makes perfect sense. So, Right. It, any little bits of because your body language is very available. You're not you're not apart from her at all. But just a couple more eyes would be really really nice if you can. Okay. Can we start there on that low E? Okay. intention about where we're phrasing to. For example, I believe that particular phrase goes to bar uh, 13, 16 to the B minor chord. So it's really fun the way it starts off a little tentative and then I want to have a little more feeling of a group arrival. Can we go again? Same place please. really, really got to um, bar 16 very well together. Now, uh, there's a classic rubato people do in 17. Have you heard it in the recordings? Ba, 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 ba. Can I ask you to try it? <laughs> Let's do that. After all, if we're not going to do it in this piece, what are we going to do? <laughs> Can we do the pickup, please, to 17? And it's re ba, 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 ba. So uh, she's going to lead it, because she's playing first and she's on top, and you'll be right with her. Pick up. That's it, yeah. And make sure bop, 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 bop. we start slow, bop, 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 and then we and then we um, the snowball gains power as it goes down the mountain. So the energy is towards the G sharp in 18. And then there, what I believe 
is that there's been, something's been a little tentative about the opening, but that's a great place for more feeling of tempo. In bar 20, on down. And that will help Linda know securely that we're moving forward from that spot. Good job with the rubato. Very convincing rubato, right? <laughs> Did you feel it? Did you believe him? Yeah. <laughs> uh, can we go again? See where I am? Mm -hmm. uh, is that bar 30? Is that what it yeah. is? Okay. Could we um, back it up to 26, please? 26. That sounds really good. You guys are very well in tune. You have very, very similar colors. It's really, mm -hmm. really going nicely. I just want you to be even more involved with each other. Here's 26. <sighs> second beat of 32, isn't that it? So can you show us that? Again, you're really good at the micro gesture, but now open up and give us this one, this sequence that has an arrival of 32 on the high G sharp. Uh, much better with the timing, thank you. Here's 30, 30 is good, all I need, three zero. <laughs> is that when they have that group intention, when they know that they're part of this three bar sequence that goes all the way up to the high G sharp, they actually play in a different way. I guess it's just the difference in having a bigger plan and a better roadmap for further along in the music, but all of a sudden the music starts like, it just like lines up in a different way. I think that's awesome. Now, in our limited time, do you want to go on to the A minor section, Pio Animato, or do you want to cover some second movement? Totally your choice. doing this. Sometimes people go the first time. I find that a little bit unsettling because we actually actually haven't heard the tune and people are already messing with it. So I do I do my rubato on the second time. So I'm, I'm doing the first time with more straight tempo. Okay. Want to try that? Yeah. Remember that this opening piano Soft is okay, but lots of energy inside it. Not a not a sagging piano. Very expectant piano. Okay, so try that for me. Uh, out tempo first time, and then second time you're gonna lead about two bars worth of slowing down to make it sound as Hungarian as possible. Okay, on the top. Thank you. 
the second beat material at 26, she's got dissonances to the chord. So can you be more and then build on it. And then I didn't get enough J crescendo. Excellent marking at 30, I didn't get enough of it. So you can go higher, you can go louder if you want, but then uh, disappear more, all right? Um, and then I, wanna, I want you to show us your, your, um, your return to tempo in bar 23 one more time. I think ba na 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 na. I think you should be slowest. What were you thinking? Did you want to go ya na 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 and spin back into tempo? What was your idea? See where I am? Sorry, I have different measure numbers. This is the da na na na. Yes. Uh huh. So ba na 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 na. Okay, let's try it. Can we go right there, please? Is maybe let's do second second ending. A second. Double bar instead. <laughs> Double bar. Oh, this is actually us. Yes. So, yep, bop, bidlip, bop. Oh, sorry. Or the C major, bidlip, bop. Oh, right, not, not on the second hand, yeah. Right. Oh, gotcha. Ready. <laughs> shaping this time and more uh, unity. Um, Doppler makes it hard for us. The last three bars, he has the piano play all your F, E, F, E. So if they're the least bit flat, we're all going to know about it. So think up, 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 up on those, okay? Can we back it up to 39, please? It's just before this, uh, before the Poco Mano. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, before the Poco Mano that we just got to. So last two bars when you're by yourself. Oh, no, no, no. until we don't know where they're coming from. It's very, very interesting. And it's a great chance for you to match color. And you're, you're doing well with colors. Can we go on the A flat major chord, which is bar 60, oh my goodness, 73 to 170, bar 70, A flat major. 
and I get an out slow. No, 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 no. I'm weaving the lines together and sewing the bits together. especially in the third octave. So for our last thing, let's just try the previous tempo primo that we just got to, the two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ninth of that tempo primo. For, for, for you, it's bar 101. Is that one? Yeah. 101. So, put a beat. so show me more pop on the accents, more brilliance in the third octave, OK? 101. <laughs> Thank you so much. You should take this on the road. <laughs> and a special hands to a very snobby bunch of us. I'm Jessica, and this is Jack. Um, yeah, I think it's another thing. Is yeah, so we're playing Dakara by, so by Ian Krauss. Um, so Ian Krauss is an American composer, but this piece is supposed to emulate traditional Irish music. So it starts off with, it's not very metric at all. It's, it's actually in free time. Very, yeah, it's free time. It's very like ambient. And then it progresses into um, an Irish reel. And Dakara means two friends in English. And how did you happen upon the piece? I had actually never heard of it until he showed it to me. My teacher, um, we, we had been playing more stuff as a duo, and my teacher was like, oh, you should do this piece, and he forgot to mention that it was hard. Yeah, um, <laughs> and, um, yeah I mean, it's, it's a piece that he plays, sure. I think, yearly, you know, and yep. um, yeah, that's kind of how we get across it. Great.
Okay, very nice job. Thank you. So, I want to start with a guitar question. Please, are you feeling that on the first two pages in my score, are you reacting to her or are you changing with her? What is the relationship between your two parts? She's sort of doing this kind of meandering thing, and are you with her or are you a little bit more just playing a sort of a, a jam that goes again and again? I try to follow her. I try to, she's very, very good at singling downbeats, and I try and keep up with that. Um, or, you know, downbeats, it's free time. Um, she tried, she, she's very, very good at signaling the gestures at which we play, and I do my best. I mean, like, I'm not trying to say I try and keep up. It's not that she's rushing. It's that I'm trying to be there at the right time in the right place. Because um, my impression is it's actually sounding a little overly lined up. Really? Okay. I wouldn't mind it having a little more space around it, because after all... Irish folk music is not supposed to be like, you know, we must all land here. Understood. It's like we're in the pub and we're improvising and stuff happens and I meet you on the next bar line and we don't worry about it. <laughs> um, can we find something? Let's, let's, let's try the opening and look for something a little bit looser uh, in the connection between the two parts. Okay. Obviously there's meetings, but then I want to see if it can get a little bit more improvisatory between the meeting spots. I think it sounds freer. I think it sounds more, the lines are a little more independent of each other in a really healthy way, and just a little more space. Was it, was it really weird to play it that way? Certain parts where, I'm, where I've like kind of <laughs> trained myself to try and be like, okay, here's where we line up. Um, but other parts where I feel like I, I have to rush through a chord to mm. get to the next one, mm. I didn't feel like that. That's and awesome. that was very liberating. Right, okay. How'd you feel? Good. I, I, <laughs> I like it, yeah, because I don't think this piece is about lining up. I think it's about the interplay. Um, I want to move on next to your tin whistleness, um, and I want you to think about folk instruments in general for a second. Would you? Um, would you consider some lighter sounds? Less focused, less concentrated, and also a little bit less vibrato. Okay. Can you shine by yourself at the yep. beginning? So close your eyes, tell yourself you're in Ireland, and um, you're playing a folk instrument. It's not silver, and it doesn't make that sound. It's, it just makes a spacious, easy, folky sound. Will benefit from that. Can we go again at the top? Yeah. So you're on track to be with her less, and you're channeling your inner Irish flute. joins in. So uh, maybe uh, I have it as bar nine. Do you have that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So if I asked the audience if they were hearing that, 
that marking, do you think they would, you sound like you're playing the same mood and the same colors as earlier, but that's a pretty big difference. Okay. Should I tell them what the words are? Or let, let, let me have you play it again. Okay. They're going to play it again. It's going to be so different. <laughs> Impassioned, <laughs> suddenly impassioned, and forte in the flute. So I just wanted it to be so dramatic that everyone in the room heard difference. Okay. Um, I want to just talk your grace notes for just a second. They seem a little bit, um, just a little bit out of the flow. <laughs> Tell yourself things like on the beat or before the beat. Just like the piano, piano, piano. Can you show me that? Uh, one more time, same place. Now that you're very, very committed to settling passion. <laughs> Yeah, it's not in score. Can you show me 16? Absolutely. So 16 is right here. Um, so. Uh... Right. Again, it's it's very together, but I still want to cultivate a little bit more of that freedom that you found in the beginning. Okay. So can you now that you're together, can you just relax a little more? I don't want it to sound. Um, I want together, but I don't want lined up. I see. All right. Can we just back it up to 15, please? Mm -hmm. Soft and seventeen. Mm -hmm. okay. Do you have that too? Actually, you I have. Piano. I have dolce and piano. Wow. Yeah. Do you think maybe you're supposed to lead more, and she's supposed to almost be obligato in you? Only on this gesture, I believe. Only on the. Because she, you embrace us that she doesn't have. Yeah. yeah. Good. Let's get that. Boy, that was so good when you were less concerned about lining up. Can we go on the lineup bar? Yes. That's right on sixteen. Yeah. So show me that different balancing you're going to achieve in um, in eighteen especially. Here's sixteen. Fortissimo, and then why do you think the last marking at letter D is only forte? What do you think that's about? Is that a subito drop? Uh, is that how you're interpreting it? I think so, yeah. Okay, so I didn't quite get that. I, like I said, I loved your cell, but buddy, buddy, and then less to create the new mood for letter D. Can we just back that up before D? One, two, three. Three before D.
I thought at, at 48, you were a little bit no found, but then I thought you really found your groove at 64. Um, and I really want to encourage you, always in one, never in two. And then in one, in, in, a, whole, in a whole bar, then you'll be able to make the accents pop. But if there's too many beats, we'll lose the accents. Uh, can we go right on 48? Um, like I say, what you were able to capture at 64 was great. Bring that into the 48 material. Light, light and in the groove. Here's 48. <laughs> Really take a risk and go bum bum bum. Make that shorter bum bum bum. I I see it's marked sometimes short, not all the time. But try it all short. I think bum 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 because bum bum ba ba sounds a little bit um blurry. Skip for me six, to the next one, uh, bar 64, please. Sorry. No. Sorry, skip. You're 64? Oh, When the notes get fast, do you are you rhythmically ahead or behind? Do you hear it? Um, a little ahead yeah. on the triplets. Okay, I think you're a little concerned about them. Remember, they're just ornaments. They're just ornaments. They just mm -hmm. stand in for for the. So instead of but, but, mm -hmm. but, but not to not to speed because then we lose that groove. But you guys are doing awesome. Thank you okay. so much. Great job. <laughs>
sorry, super, super, super. We're going to work backwards, so we're going to start with the 716, okay? Because I'm a pretty sadistic kind of guy. Yes. <laughs> All right. So um, this is, of course, a masterpiece in the Woodwind Quintet literature, and the way it evokes um, uh, summer and that, that opening marking about slow and indolence, just perfect. It should feel so humid and sticky and, and uh, like uh, Mississippi, Alabama in August. But anyway, other things evoke, evoke later in the piece. The way I was taught is that seven is a series of harmonicas going in and out. And of course, you know, and that accounts for a little bit for the rhythmic shift because the harmonica wouldn't always take the same time for the inhales for the exhale. But what I think you can achieve at seven is that you should sound like four flutes for the opening while the flute has the melody. You should sound like three flutes under, uh, underneath her. But then at eight, it should change color and sound like, what is it at eight? Is it clear? Yeah. Correct. So that's what I want to work on first. Can we go at seven? So we're harmonica-like. We're just buoyant and light and lifted. But the point is to match the color of the person on top. So I'm, I'm sorry, but I misspoke. The oh, first person on top is the ba 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 ba. Yeah. Okay. So we so can sound like, so like oboes now. I'm going to switch to clarinets and rehearsal eight. Okay. So uh, mask your color underneath the color of the leader. So oboe one, oboe two, oboe three, oboe four. Bar <laughs> three. <laughs> it's a nightmare. <laughs> Super, that's so good. Um, what I think is that I actually think he should cue the uh, okay. at seven yeah. in order to, to oh, sure. uh, create that leadership of your own matching his sound. But that was so good, it actually seems like it solved the rhythm mm -hmm. by giving you something else to think about. <laughs> oh my god, now I have to be an oboe too. Um, that was really, really good. Now I, want, I do want to back up. Can we go up to the really beautiful, sad melody yes. at, um, at rehearsal? Two. Two, exactly. cushion, you're the melody of course, and then you're just doing that far away echo thing. But I, I feel like the, the cushion people are a little bit, you're not off, I just think you could be a little more linked. And then I want to ask about your articulation. Um, oh yeah, that's what I want. Uh, can you show me difference? So um, he's got a slur and tenuto, then he's got slur and staccato. So I don't think he's showing that difference yet. I'm looking for yaw, 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 mm. boom, 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 boom. Sure. So heavier on those, kind of weighted, and then boom, beep, and then mm. a little bit more space on those. Okay. Here's again rehearsal two, please. And then I wish you were a little more coordinated on your releases of things. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know if you actually want to show a release. Yeah. I might do that if I was playing something like, like when I'm going to lift off, and then it could coordinate the breath for everyone, and then the re-entry. Can we try one of those? I don't want to go all the way back. That was so good when you showed more of those different lengths. Yeah. We can actually go on at three. At three. Use the, uh, use the um, show them the release of the third bar of three, and you'll see if that's a helpful thing. Okay. Here's three, please. Okay, so dynamics, are these equal, or is one more or less? 
less. You're both commenting on him, yeah. but what's your printed dynamic? Piano. Piano. Okay, so make sure you, you set a little less than him. Okay. So just bring yours up, just, just 10%. Mm -hmm. Same place, please. And I think you should lighten the vibrato because horns okay. don't vibrate the way we do. Yep. Okay. Whether they, <laughs> whether they want to or not. Here's the fourth bar of three. Fourth bar of three. Sorry, three before four, um, elongate the second beat, be, 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 and play into the dashes. Okay. Don't rephrase, body, yada, is too much activity underneath a long, sustained melody. Same place, please. Fourth of three. Sounds too counted. Just looser. Don't don't. Um, she has a triplet over two beats in a five-four, so she could be like <laughs> 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 the calculator thing. <laughs> Just let it be echoey and and it's kind of the way the horn does it when you have it earlier. <laughs> Exactly. So when you write, you just sound like you're sort of almost like call and response on this melody. Can't do the rhythms like you guys do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're just a little more cumbersome. Yeah, so, but, um, but, but stay loose in them. Don't, don't get um, mathematical about it. Okay. Here's verse of four, please. When we go on to five, I want to go brighter. I want to go. Here's four, please. soft and then when the melody people start popping out at rehearsal six it's clarinet second is it oboe first yeah, yeah. just make that a little more clear that, that, that you're the you're the you're the one for those four notes <laughs> okay here's five again and uh, no surges on the pianissimo either but it's a pianissimo section with with forte outbursts but it's not it doesn't it doesn't do that it's it's uh it's um it's still yeah. it's it's all pianissimo except when marked Good. 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 A clarinet could be a little more clear that it's your melody in the two, three, four, fifth of six 
on those three outbursts. Ba -da 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 -ba -da -da. Now, can we go back to the top, please? So this is where the marking is slow and indolent, and it should just sound so lazy like we've got all the time in the world. Humid southern nights. slurred in, yeah, yeah, but I think in this case the dash might mean to tongue it. Because okay. if you don't, dee -da -dee, we don't get the um, clarity of that harmony. Okay. Good tempo and good feeling, but I'm getting too many small phrases. Make sure you're spinning me all the way to the second printed bar. Tempo's good, color's good. Pianissimo plus. Okay. So that was great intention, but now dial it down. Bassoon color, and again, um, uh, delay the vibrato so we don't know what we, we well, all of a sudden we think there's a flassoon in the room. Okay, <laughs> and don't let us know that you're announcing yourself, but just join and then and then undercline it as you know. Um, good rehearsal one, please. in with the um so uh, three in general I like the person who's leading the melodic material to be the cure when it's possible and appropriate because it just um, it does two things it tells you when we're starting and it also tells you who to listen for okay that'll be our last thing because we're running out of time rehearsal one one more time so you're the one okay uh, into the third bar of one here's rehearsal one last time Great job. Thank you. Thank you.